What's up, Psychedelic Investors? My name's James, and you're watching The Psychedelic Investor, your number one news source for psychedelic stocks. Today, we have what might just be the most promising results from a clinical trial that I have ever seen regarding psychedelics. Yesterday, or on May 3rd, the New York Times released data from a MAPS Phase 3 clinical trial testing treating PTSD with MDMA, and the results are... Wow. The top line number is that 67%, two-thirds of people suffering with PTSD, were cured after MDMA-assisted therapy sessions. Not, they had their symptoms relieved a teensy-weensy little bit, or they got a little bit better. No. These people improved so much that they no longer qualified to be diagnosed as having PTSD. This is utterly stunning. We're going to get into the details of this study, what comes next, and which companies are using MDMA in their programs. But first, if you enjoy this episode, invest in the channel with your like and subscribe. Over time, you'll see your investment grow as we continue to bring you the information that you need to know before investing in the psychedelic medicines landscape. Enjoy the episode. Scott Ostrom's story is all too familiar. He was a soldier who did two tours of Iraq, and when he left the war in 2007, the war refused to leave him. In the ensuing 12 years, Scott's life was punctuated by panic attacks during the day and nightmares while he slept. Bullets would dribble out of the end of my gun or I'd get separated from my team and be lost in a town where insurgents were watching me, he told the Times. His PTSD was destroying his life. He dropped out of college, pushed away his family and friends, was charged with assault, and he attempted suicide. Throughout this spiral, neither medication nor therapy could help. And it was in this context that Scott joined the MAPS-funded clinical trial to treat PTSD with MDMA. In the first of three sessions, after consuming the drug, Scott laid on a couch in a lucid dream-like state where, with his eyes covered, he encountered a spinning, oily black ball. Like an onion, the ball had many layers, each one a memory. And after peeling back the memory ball layer by layer, when he finally made it to the center, Scott relived the moment in Iraq that was the cause of his PTSD. And at that moment, Faced with his trauma for a second time, Scott said this, I became the person I needed to be to survive that combat deployment. Over the next two sessions, he continued to meet his trauma head on, engaging with his PTSD alter ego, who he named the bully, and asked for the real Scott to return. Once the trial wrapped up, Scott was a changed man. No longer did he suffer from the nightmares or panic attacks. To the times he celebrated, literally, I'm a different person. The reason I like calling this medicine is it stimulated my own consciousness's ability for self-healing. You understand why it's okay to experience unconditional love for yourself. The most heartbreaking part of Scott's story is that it's not unique. It's estimated that 7% of the American population will suffer from PTSD in their life including 13% of combat veterans. As was the case for Scott, between a third and half of these victims can find no relief through classical treatment, making their condition chronic. Lasting years or even a lifetime, this is tens of millions of broken people in the United States alone, not to say anything of the rest of the world. To give an idea of the monetary cost of this, which is of course secondary to the human cost, in 2018, the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs spent $17 billion on disability payments for over 1 million veterans with PTSD. It is in this context that the MAPS trial was set up. Our system is broken, and we need solutions. And if the solution is using a Schedule One drug like MDMA, better known as ecstasy, well then so be it. This Phase 3 study, whose results will be published in Nature Medicine later this month, included 90 people. These individuals were combat veterans, first responders, and victims of sexual assault, mass shootings, domestic violence, or childhood trauma. All had severe PTSD and had been diagnosed, on average, for more than 14 years. 
Many had a history of alcohol and substance use disorder, and 90% of these people had considered suicide. These people were split into two groups, those who took MDMA in a therapy setting and those who took a placebo and underwent therapy. Before any drugs were taken, preparatory sessions were undertaken with therapists to prime the individuals to confront their traumas. Then, in three separate eight-hour sessions scheduled a month apart from each other, the patients either took MDMA or the placebo and together with the therapist confronted their trauma. Here, I want to emphasize that it is not just the MDMA, which is the medicine. The therapy is also important. As a senior author of the paper, Rick Doblin says, it is not the drug, it is the therapy enhanced by the drug. While we'll have to wait to get all the details once the results of the study are published, the top line numbers reported by the New York Times are revolutionary. Two months after the last MDMA dose, 67% of people in the MDMA group, two thirds of them, had improved so much that they no longer were diagnosed with PTSD. And this compares to 32% of people in the placebo group who just had therapy. Furthermore, there were zero cases of serious adverse side effects in the MDMA group. The lead author of the study, Jennifer Mitchell, said to the Times, This is a wonderful, fruitful time for discovery because people are suddenly willing to consider these substances as therapeutics again, which hasn't happened in 50 years. So how does MDMA help dramatically with therapy? Well, apparently scientists still don't really understand how this works. According to the Times, the substance binds to proteins that regulate serotonin, a neurotransmitter that can, among other things, lift mood. Antidepressant medications like Prozac bind to these same proteins and block the reabsorption of serotonin, but MDMA takes this process further, causing the proteins to pump serotonin into the synapses, strengthening their chemical signal. MDMA also elevates levels of oxytocin, dopamine, and other chemical messengers, producing feelings of empathy, trust, and compassion. But its primary therapeutic effect may come from its seeming ability to reopen what neuroscientists refer to as a critical period, the window during childhood when the brain has the superior ability to make new memories and store them. Evidence from a mouse study published in Nature in 2019 indicates that MDMA may return the adult brain to its earlier state of malleability. So while this is all fascinating diving into the science, honestly, regardless of how it works, the results are stunning. Though, of course, we're obviously going to need to repeat this with thousands of people rather than dozens. I say this every time. It's true every time. The results are great, but we still need to repeat it much larger groups. Nevertheless, a phase three clinical trial, which is structured using all the proper scientific protocols that shows MDMA therapy curing two thirds of chronic PTSD patients is game changing revolutionary. Now, this is an investing channel, so let's talk about which public companies are set to be the largest benefactors of this study. So first up, we have Numinous. This company is actually working in conjunction with MAPS in Canada to conduct a compassionate access trial to those with PTSD. This trial is either already recruiting patients or is set to do so imminently. If Numinous can replicate these stunning findings, then they may get government permission to start using this treatment in their therapy centers, which currently only provide ketamine treatment for depression. This could allow them to gain a first mover's advantage and begin scaling up their therapy centers. Though perhaps the furthest advanced public company using MDMA, there's also lots of other companies hot on their heels. For example, MindMed is also working with MDMA and have recently completed a study on personalized dosing of MDMA. On top of this, they have a phase one trial looking at the effects of combining LSD with MDMA. However, it hasn't yet been disclosed what this will treat or which ailment this plans to treat. Atai Life Sciences is also in the preclinical stages using an MDMA variant, a derivative to treat PTSD through their subsidiary Empath Bio. Midacin has a compound called Myco002, which is similar to MDMA, and they hope to start using this in clinical trials soon also. Plus, and finally, the private company Awaken Life Sciences also will have a phase two study looking at treating alcohol use disorder with MDMA. So I just wanna be clear here guys that even if we're fairly certain that MDMA is going to be an effective treatment, we are far too early in the process to know which companies will be the winners of this field. 
Also likely is that these companies will begin tweaking the chemical format, as Atai and Midasin and others have already started to do, to both improve the drug's therapeutic benefits and also give them IP protection. If this is the case, there will be a battle for whose version of MDMA will be the most effective. Either way, it's likely to take five plus years before we know for certain who will be the winner of the MDMA race, or which companies will be the winners of the MDMA race. As the power of MDMA seems to be its ability to enhance therapy, and of course this upcoming statement is going to need to be tested, of course, one could imagine that this substance can help in a range of issues that we currently use therapy to overcome. Yes, PTSD, but also perhaps addiction, unhealthy attachment, depression, anxiety, and more. These results from MAPS are so exciting because they are the beginning, not the end. This will spur so much more research into the field, not only into MDMA, but also into other psychedelics like LSD and psilocybin. Again, these results are extremely exciting, and it seems that we may, for the first time in decades, have a tool to help treat mental disorders, and this will revolutionize our society. We have so many millions of people suffering in silence from diseases of despair, and for the first time, it looks like there might be hope. As investors, there will be lots of opportunities in the coming five years to make a profit off of this, and this channel will be vigilantly keeping track of all of these companies and deciding which ones are best suited in this industry to do just that. But for now, let's all just revel in the fact that there appears to be an MDMA therapy that works, and in the very near future, we could be healing millions of people. Today is a good day for humanity. If you enjoyed this episode, tell the algorithm with your like and subscribe. Not only will it help this channel continue to grow, but you'll also continue to see the information that you need to see on these topics. So this is James from The Psychedelic Investor, signing out for today. I'll see you guys soon. I love you all. Bye-bye.